Cheyenne is my savior. She's the love of my life. She has always been there for me through thick and thin. Oh, I woke you up. Oh, now you're up. Uh-huh. <laughs> my name is David Sharp, and I served for six years in the United States Air Force Security Forces. It all started right after 9-11, and we got four deployed again. Uh, Uzbekistan and uh, a couple of our buddies did, didn't make it back. And so I went, I came back home finally in March of 2002, and I pretty much segregated myself from my family and friends. Uh, my friends, we would go out, they would say, hey Dave, do you want a beer? I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm going to cruise around this bar, and I'm going to look at the first guy who looks at me longer than two seconds. I'm going to pop him. They said, we can't hang out with you anymore, Dave. You're out of control. I was like, fine, I don't need you anyways. So my friend came over and he said, let's check out this pit bull rescue. I said, hell yeah, I wanna, I'm a fighter. I want a fighting dog. I go down there and there's this one puppy that's not paying me any mind. But all the others are all around me. And then I remember she came over to me and she like licked my hand, sniffed it, and left. And then she came, just laid back down in the dirt on the opposite side of that pen. And I said, I'm going to get her. Cheyenne, you remember that? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. You bum. You're a bum. You are a bum. She's a baby. This is a baby. A big baby. Ugh. Ugh. This is her. I brought her home. And about a couple weeks later, she um, witnessed me punching holes in walls and beating up the refrigerator door. And this was normal for me during this time. I see this little tail out of the corner of my eye. And I look down at her, and she's looking at me, you know, doing this back, to, waving her head back, back and forth. And I look down at her, and I just picked her up and took her back to my bed and just started crying and talking about everything that happened, what I experienced, what I'm going through, and it felt like a 10,000 pound weight was lifted off my chest. It literally did. When I first got back from my deployment, I remember we were sitting in a coffee shop and I just felt like everything was closing in and I just wheeled myself out of the coffee shop as soon as possible and I just sat back waiting for it to blow up. I was having flashbacks and just these were crazy. I ended up picking up Sapper from the P2V Foundation. There's a there's certain things that you know I only talk to Sapper about. Not that I don't think my family understands or want to hear. Come here, come here. Just that you know you always have that thing. Will they judge me over this or not? Yeah. A little bit. You know, you just really don't want to tell your story to somebody. Like, you got these doctors who, who not, you know, they've heard it. They haven't seen it. You know, so you just talk to your dog, man. Talking to Sapper, it just lets me get it off my chest and get it out there. 18 veterans commit suicide each day in this country. 18. Also, on the other end of that spectrum, there's 4 million animals, sheltered animals, killed in this country every year. So that's what we do. We take four million and we pair them up with the 6,500 per year. It's kind of like a match.com between shelter pet and a veteran or emergency first responder. He's, you, this little guy was used for uh, fighting. He was a toy for other dogs to beat up on and they don't have a choice. What a <coughs> Sorry. What a better companion to have than a veteran like us, or a firefighter or a police officer to uh, help this little guy out, right? He has the physical scars on the outside, but we have the mental scars on the inside. So that's where we heal each other and meet in the middle of the road, you know? I can share anything and everything with her, unconditional love. And so, really, like, I got a good family that loves me, friends love that love me. I love you. And I got her.